Hey, thanks guys for showing up today. Um, this is my story on automating VDI and kind of what I've done to cut down on some of my daily mundane tasks. Um, I'm Chris Hildebrandt. Um, marketing got a hold of my title. I work for a large pharmaceutical company. Um, v expert, UC champion, blah, blah. My blog, GitHub. Uh, everything I'm talking about today is on the GitHub. Um, so, realistically, why do you look at automating things? Um, it's extremely fast, it's reliable, it's repeatable. You can keep reusing it over and over again. Uh, you can enhance your logging, reporting, and maybe eventually you can automate yourself out of a job into a better job. Um, so, who's here has automated any parts of VDI, from image creation, going on forth like that, you know, optimizing stuff, good. So, uh, the rest, that means the rest of you do stuff like a normal pick worker where you're just walking up picking orders. Where, for me, I wanted to do something more like Amazon. You know, just sit back, watch it go, pretend like I'm actually doing something from day to day. You know, still magically get paid. Um, so, uh, st stepping back, we looked at our processes, what we were doing, how we were doing them, and what took the most amount of time, and what realistically was the um, most time savings we could come up with with the least amount of effort into automating. So that way we could step in and continually automate other things on top of that. Um, you know, from master image creation, which you don't do very often, uh, the update and refresh cycle, I know everybody spends a massive amount of time doing that for us. Um, updating the horizon environment, depending on what your rules and regulations are, that takes quite a bit of time, especially to test. Uh, creating app stacks, updating app stacks, so on and so forth. So the first one we chose to tackle was um, updating the refresh, or update and refresh cycles. Um, so looking at it a realistic method, um, saying it takes two people two months to update 50 pools six times a year. You know, that's on top of your daily work and stuff and going on in that realm. Um, basically, it's a hand-checked list. You occasionally run into missteps. Um, you like have your little checkbox saying, hey, I updated a job on this image. I think I updated it on this image, so I'm just going to go ahead and check it because I don't want to go back and then go on and then come find out you deploy it and you miss the update on Java and now you've got a ticket and you have to fight through. Uh, go back, re-image, refresh, blah, blah, you're wasting more time. So um, what we looked at is you know creating a plan, setting down, laying down what you're doing, what's going on, how it works where it's coming from, um, you know, why do you need to do this? Why do you need to do that? Does it really need to be that way? Um, what tools do you already have in your environment to help you through this? Um, do you guys have like Kubernetes or you're using something like Jenkins to automate some other stuff on the back end? You know, what other tool sets do you have available to you like SCCM, you know? Um, and then if you need any additional tools, just sitting there looking at it. Um, again, think outside the box. Um, we threw together a plan, kind of rough, or I threw together a plan, kind of rough, um, coded some things, basically wrote things out in PowerShell, and just basically set some places where I knew what I could do, what I couldn't do. So um, I kind of outlined some stuff, realized that there are some bad things. Um, you can set one-time logons. Um, I don't know if you guys knew this, but this was one of my bad ideas. Um, when you set the default password and registry for a one-time logon, because that's how we were trying to do a refresh cycle, um, it stores it in plain text. So, bad thing. <laughs> Didn't realize that until after I tried it once or twice and I was looking through the registry and I'm like, uh, oops. So, don't be afraid to fail, talk about it. I mean, that's how everybody learns, and it's the reason why it's in here. Um, so, scrap plan A, go to plan B. Um, 
just go back, look through things, look at does it really have to be that way? And I, I mean, seriously, look, you know, don't be afraid of change. There are so many people that are scared. Uh, just kind of brace it and go on because automation is completely changing how you're doing your job. It's making it more efficient so that way you can stand up and do other things. So, your standard update process. So most people have um, your power on your image, you install Windows updates, you reboot the VM, you, of course you install more updates because you can't do it all in one round. So, and then reboot again, install your third party stuff, reboot again. Um, like if you're running Symantec, you run your set prep tool, uh, run VMware Optimizer, defrag, um, we use custom reg keys, so we'd update our custom reg keys saying, hey, we updated this image on this date, disk clean up, disable SCCM services, update vCenter notes, same thing, just that way we knew where it was, when it was updated. Power down your VM, take snapshot, recompose pool, update your fun spreadsheet, and hope and pray that you actually did everything you said you did. <laughs> um, so, looking at automation for this. So you're, you're, you're pondering what's going on. Um, how do you update Windows? How do you automate updating Windows? How do you update you know, third-party applications? How do you cut down on, of course, the time to do this? How do you cut down on your wasted time from tickets, human errors, all that great fun stuff? So for me, this is kind of my answer. We chose to use SCCM. Uh, most places have it in place now. Uh, you can use SCCM to push your updates. Um, by leaving your VM powered on, you can automatically push updates to it. Uh, your master image, leave it powered on. You can push updates to it uh, via that way. It'll auto reboot when it's needed to, depending on how your deployments are set up. Um, same way with third-party applications. So any image or any software that we install on our master image comes from SCCM, and then we do forced updates. So um, we do it to those that collection alone. So that way, you know, when there's Adobe out there, it auto refreshes or auto pushes. And then um, the uh, other part of this is literally automating the entire process. Um, so I wrote a PowerShell script to do every bit of this. Um, so from starting the script, we would create a ServiceNow incident, create a ServiceNow change. Um, we'd start with a powered on image. So as I'm telling you, you know, leave it on or turn it back on after you recompose. Um, it ought to make an API call to install the Microsoft updates if they weren't already installed. Um, install the third-party applications um, if they weren't already installed. It'll check to see if there's any up. Um, reboot the VM. Run the set prep tool. Run optimizer. Run defrag. Update custom reg keys. Disk clean up. Disable SCCM services because you've got to disable that. Uh, there is a very good reason. It will actually, for like link clones, it will create a computer object every time a new VM is created. So you can fill up the SCCM database. Made that mistake once. So, fair warning. Um, update vCenter notes, power down the VM, take a snapshot, power back on the master because I want it to update faster the next time around. Recompose the pool, uh, and then turn back on the SCCM services and the Nest Essential services for updating things on the back end. Uh, so that way when updates come available, it auto installs. Cuts down on the time for the script to run. Uh, realistically, the script takes on average about 18 to 25 minutes per master to run. Um, you can let it run, like we, we uh, more or less run it on Sundays. So updates on Sundays. Uh, recomposes on Sunday uh, for a prod pool, and then updates, or it does a second update on Tuesday night, and that's how we, we're literally updating every week. 
um, just kind of showing some of the completion status of the way things work. Um, as we're showing, it's publishing. This is completely 100% automated. Um, you know, for us, we're using custom notes, uh, tags, and also custom edge keys. They all match. Um, so we can follow it within the image, tag it, however we need to do it, search it, find it, anything we can. So that way, if it gets orphaned somewhere, we know when it was updated, when it was created, how it was ran through. So savings. It has saved so much inconsistencies. No more missed updates because we don't have the guesstimation of the human error. Uh, creating log files that are uploaded into ServiceNow. So the entire running process, so every single command that's ran is actually logged and put into ServiceNow so that way you can go back and prove what changes you made versus your spreadsheet where you say you did something, but you probably didn't somewhere. I'm not saying that you would miss everything, but you know, there's always something you miss. Um, pool refreshes are literally a scheduled task. Um, and I see refresh um, because this works on both link clone and Insta clones. Uh, right now on Horizon or on Windows 7 and Windows 10. Um, so you know, basically you go down from two full time or uh, no more checklists. Now the big thing is instead of 24 tickets, we're getting an average of half a ticket or a ticket every other refresh cycle for just something stupid that, you know, hey, um, we installed a Excel patch and it broke some stupid add on, some weird like that. Um, which is really hard to test for because it's like one person that actually uses it. Um, we got to do some math. So um, you guys can read through this, but basically if you kind of lay out how things are going, you know, you're saving a massive amount of time going through it. Um, just in, you know, unplanned hours, you know, you're, your 60 plus unplanned hours due to tickets and random other stuff. Um, going down to 2.5 hours for unplanned outage. You know, realistically, I mean, you're, you're about 945 hours saved a year. Now, if you go from six updates a year to 52, where you're starting to update weekly, you're realistically at 6,370 hours, or 6,370 hours saved, flat out. That's if you literally watch the script run. If you don't want to watch it run and just let it run as a scheduled task and just carry on your day, almost 10,000 hours a year saved on 50 pools. Just figuring as you're running through things. It just works phenomenally well. Um, man, I think I left out a slide or two. Um, so other ways you can look at this, um, there's the V-Check for Horizon. I don't know if you guys have ever used it, played through it. Um, it is literally the easiest little tool to compare what's going on. Um, there is coming an as-built for Horizon. Uh, if you guys have heard what an as-built report is, basically it's, um, uh, it's every environment variable that you could have for like vCenter right now. I'm actually writing the one for Horizon. Um, so you'll be able to run a PowerShell script that'll grab every single setting that you have in Horizon throw it in a Word document that you can turn it in and hand to your boss and say, hey, this is every setting that you have set. You know, from every connection server, every little setting that's set within a pool, from the naming convention and on. Um, a guy by the name of Chris Twist created a script on how to create um, app stacks. This is the old API model. Um, there is actually an updated API model. I haven't had a chance to play with it much, but 
Um, that's one of the next things on my list is automating app stack creations. Um, image builds. Um, I think I left out that slide by accident, so I apologize. Um, the, so I've been working with Packer IO as a home. Uh, Packer IO is a phenomenal tool, especially for building images. Um, I am also about 95% done with uh, which I should be posting here in a couple weeks on my GitHub um, is um, automation from Pixie Boots. So creating master images from a Pixie uh, from Software Center or from SCCM, uh, doing an image load built on task sequence, um, hitting the F12 key to do the Pixie Boot from within the console, logging into it, uh, running it all completely through, um, doing all the customization on the back end so that way it's literally ready to throw into a pool. Um, if you have anything extra, yeah, you'll have to tweak it to meet your guys' needs, but the framework's there. Um, another big thing is uh, building Instaclones. You know, I, if you guys have ever literally looked at the API, it is one line of code to create an Instaclone pool. Yes, there's a lot of attributes off the back end, I'm not gonna lie but it is literally one line of code to create an Instaclone pool. It is a lot quicker than clicking through the GUI, massively quicker than clicking through the GUI. Um, so questions, comments, uh, try to keep them short, concise. I would show a demo, but it takes forever. You know, like I said, it takes 18 to 25 minutes to run. I didn't want to just sit here. Hey, you can watch the screen go by. Looks fancy. Um, yep, yep. It starts. It uh, right now it's doing it sequentially, so it's doing one pool at a time. So, or one master image at a time. So it'll run through, update one master image, start with the next one. Um, I, I did start playing with doing, um, splitting it up so we were once. I ran into some problems with uh, some duplicate variables causing some problems within the script um, because of how it was feeding stuff back because we're using PS Remote to connect into the master images. And as it's passing commands back, or the information back into the master or into the scripting server, um, it was causing problems and dropping off. And I haven't, honestly, I haven't had enough time to sit there and figure out how to fix it. Um, but it's on my to-do list is to create it so that way um, you can set how many schedule or how many, it's, I want to set it so that way you can at least run four simultaneous at a time. So that way you're not killing everything because it is actually running fairly quick. Um, but if not, all right, thanks everybody.